Hi, I'm Nash. Alright, hi, I'm Michael. I'm Nash. And uh, today we're going to teach you a new game uh, that we invented and it's called Five in a Row. Now, to play this game, you need a regular deck of cards and we have just taken out all the picture cards. So the deck goes from ace to ten and you each need a game board. Now, the game board you make yourself. So I've already done mine. And I'm going to show you here what that looks like. It's just a 5x5 five five grid with the numbers 1 from 25 drawn on the grid. Now, you, now, part of the feature of the game is that you need to place the numbers. And this is part of the strategy of the game. So I've done mine. Nash hasn't done his yet. I'm going to get his, him to do his in a second. Just going to remind Nash of the rules of the game. So on each turn, Nash, you take two cards and you try to make an equation with them. Yeah. And the aim of the game is to get five in a row. So horizontal, vertical, diagonal, but you need to get five in a row to win. Um, if you can't use your two cards to make an equation, if you want, you can hold on to them and pass your turn, and then next turn you'll get more cards. The rule for this game is you can make an equation with two cards, three cards, four cards, whatever you want. But the other feature is that on any given turn, you can actually make more than one equation. So if you've got four cards, you can actually use it to make two different equations. So you can be strategic about whether you want to keep cards for a second turn if you think that will help you. But you can only make up to two equations on a turn. Nashi, you work out where you want to put your numbers. Um, and so this is a big part of the game, the strategy about where do you place the numbers. And you'd be hoping that the more you play, the more that they'll be uh, thinking behind where the numbers are placed. Okay, so we've jumped ahead a little bit because I figured you didn't need to see Nash writing every number. So you can see here the, the top board and the bottom board look quite different, okay? And as I said before, as Nash was drawing his numbers, the idea would be that rather than telling the person, you would let them discover as they play the strategy about which numbers are best to be placed where. So we're still in that stage of discovery. Um, and so another, further to what we were just saying, I mean, you could easily play this game with counters to mark the five numbers in a row, but I wouldn't recommend using counters because the, one of the crucial things in the game is the designing of the board. So I think the best thing to do is to be crossing the numbers off your boards as you're playing. And we're playing on big A4 sheets so you can see them, but I mean, normally we would just play it in a book like that and we'd only take up a little bit of room in the book. So... The idea is that each time you play, you create a new board. All right, Nash, you ready? Yeah. Okay. So your turn, Nashy. Seven and nine. Seven take away nine. Nah, nine take away seven. Which one's right? Seven take away nine. Nine take away seven. Two. What Beautiful. Two. Or seven. Sixteen. Sixteen, I can't do. Where is sixteen? Where are you? Sixteen. There you are. Beautiful. Good choice. And so because Nash used both the cards, they go in the discard pile. He doesn't get to keep them. Okay, so my turn. So I've got a nine and an ace, which gives me a ten or an eight. Or a nine, if I do nine times one. So I think the eight is probably the way to go. All right, your turn, Nashi. Okay, so I've got a four and a four. Ah, okay. So four times four is 16. Four divided by four is one. 4 plus 4 is 8, 4 take away 4 is 0. I'm actually going to keep these. So I'm going to pass my turn, I'm going to keep those cards. Nash, your turn. Sorry, I shouldn't touch them. 8 and an 8. Don't put them over here. 16, where's my 16? Oh, where did you find 16? I don't have a 0. No. Keep the cards. Okay, keep them. So now, because I kept these on my last turn, I now have four cards to play with. Now, with these four cards, I can make one equation or two equations. 
Now, I think, okay, I don't really want that. I, okay. I'm going to do eight takeaway one is seven. And I'm, I'm going to keep these cards for another turn. All right, your turn, Nash. Nash. Okay. Put that over there. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make 19. Oh, 19 will be good. How do you make 19 with them? 10 plus 8 equals 18 plus 1 equals 19. Beautiful. Okay, so my turn. So as you can see, there's a real... There's a couple of different ways you can approach this. One way would be to just try and get five in a row in the one spot and accumulate cards to help you do that. The other way would be to try and fill your boards with crosses and then just hopefully you'll um, eventually get five in a row that way. So there's two different sort of philosophies of how you can play. Okay, now what am I trying to get? So 17 or 14. I feel like I'm holding on to... Too many cards here. Okay, I'm going to do... Nashi, 3 plus 3 is 6. And then I'm also going to do 6 plus 6 is 12. So I'm going to put, make two equations on the one turn. As we said, that's the most you can make on any turn, which is two equations. Nashi. What happens if you have six cards? Well, you can still only make... You can make one or two equations. Hey, that's three in that one. Two. So we just jumped ahead a little bit in the game. That's three, eight. Nashi, what's what is double three? Oh no, I'll just do this. What's six plus eight? Fourteen. Which gives me five in a row. Five in a row. All right, so that's five in a row. Now, this didn't happen, but if we, we nearly got to the end of the deck. If you get to the end of the deck, you just grab the discard pile, shuffle it up, put it back and keep playing, because the games can go for a long period of time. Now, I've got a question, Nash. If you were to play again, would you do any different anything different in terms of the way you set up your board? and maybe 24, because... There are two numbers that are hard to make. Ah, so do you think there are some numbers that are easier to make and some numbers yeah. that are harder to make? Okay, so that's how you The one digit numbers are so hard to make. Yeah. Ah, okay, so leave it there. But that's the type of thinking we want to see. That's the type of discussion. But much better to have that through discovery, through playing the game time and time and time again. And as you can see, we're playing lots and lots of thinking as we're going about adding, subtracting, multiplying, combining different cards. If you want to make it more challenging, you could change the range of the numbers. So you could go like two digit numbers. So you're starting at 10 and you're working from there. Or you could make it that you could put any 25 numbers on the board you want, as long as no number appears more than once, which would then allow students to be saying, I think 32 is a good choice, or I think 48 is a good choice, and having that discussion about why you're choosing those particular numbers. But that's obviously moving more into multiplication. You don't think that's a good choice? All right, that's five in a row. Thank you for tuning in. We hope that that is a great game that you can enjoy playing, and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye.